Uh, and go ahead with the session. We will play Dr. Vinit Agrawal's uh, video. A very good evening to all of you and thank you to the Jaipur Surgical Festival Organizing Committee to give us the opportunity to interact uh, with you today. My name is Dr. Vinit Agrawal and I lead the Ethicon Education Solutions for India. And today I am going to present to you a topic called the science of smoke. Uh, the reason why we are talking about it now is uh, because of this image. And it really reminded uh, me of the situation we are in today. Uh, I'm sure you've come across this uh, story of everybody, somebody, anybody and nobody. And it reminds me of the time where surgical site infections were very common. Uh, this was before uh, disinfectants and sterilization was uh, common. And it was only when somebody discovered that because instruments, our hands were not sterilized, they were not cleaned, it was resulting in surgical site infections. And then the importance of microorganisms and how to deal with them. Now we are in a similar situation when it comes to smoke. Now smoke has been around, uh, surgical smoke has been around since the time surgery started. Uh, since the time there was introduction of uh, energy sources. And because it has become uh, such a part of the OR environment, uh, it is accepted that there is going to be smoke and nothing needs to be done about it. But just like SSI, there is a lot of merit in dealing with smoke and to ensure that there is a smoke-free ORM environment for everybody. So there was there, there are studies done, there are surveys done, and uh, OSHA, which is a big guideline body for occupational uh, safety, uh, they did a survey and found out that more than 500,000 healthcare workers are exposed to surgical smoke every year. And when they did a survey with around 500 nurses, they found that three-fourths of them had at least one symptom related to surgical smoke. And these symptoms could be, uh, you know, a cough, irritation in the eye, headache, uh, and so on. And when further studies were done of the actual smoke, which is captured, so they found out the contents of the smoke and they came down to these studies where if you're using, say, an ESU, which could be a monopolar, bipolar, uh, every gram of tissue that you burn is equal to inhaling six in unfiltered cigarettes in 15 minutes. And there are also studies which are showing mutagenicity. So the smoke, just like surgical smoke, uh, just like cigarette smoke, even surgical smoke uh, has the potential to cause uh, some harm equivalent to cancer. <clears throat> so what I'm trying to say is uh, surgical smoke is dangerous. Uh, you need to think about it. You need to be aware of it. Uh, however, there is no study showing the safe level that if you're exposed to half an hour, if you're exposed to a certain volume, 
uh, then you'll be okay. And beyond a certain point, then you need to really worry about it. So we're going to explore uh, smoke more in detail. Uh, what are the components? Uh, what are the potential risks to you, the patient, and anybody in the OR? And what are the practical steps we can take today uh, to manage smoke? So first thing for us to understand is smoke can be created by a lot of devices. So anything which is energy based, uh, whether it's a drill, pencils, saws, even lasers, all of them are going to create a surgical smoke. And what may differ is uh, the size of the particles, the volume of smoke, uh, etc. So we're going to deep dive into what is surgical smoke, uh, why is it a health concern, and what can we do to reduce the risk. So surgical smoke is also known as uh, cautery smoke or smoke plume or bioaerosol. It is essentially cellular fluid, which is around 95%, and released as steam. And it can have both uh, organic and inorganic compounds as the 5% of the particulate matter. And this particulate matter can also be bacteria, fungi, virus, etc. Uh, in all the studies that I've done till now, they have found live cellular material, uh, blood fragments, viruses, bacteria, and so on. Uh, apart from uh, the chemical compounds, which I will talk about in a bit. And the biological matter, uh, which can be live also, uh, they are carrying aerosols uh, in both open and laparoscopic surgery as well as uh, the particle size it varies between uh, 0 0.01 to 200 but the majority is between 0 0.3 to 5 and why that is important is if you see all the filters you might have heard recently because of covid a lot of filters uh, being talked about uh, hepa filters uh, ulpa filters so they all uh, give you a measurement saying that it will effectively filter out 99% uh, of uh, particles between 0.3 and 0.5. And the reason being majority of your particles are in that range. So apart from biological matter, uh, the compounds uh, which were found, formaldehyde, benzene, uh, carbon monoxide, hydrogen cyanide, you already know these are uh, harmful compounds which we should not be exposed to too much. Uh, in one of the studies that was far done, they found all these bacteria and viruses in smoke, uh, such as Hep B, HPV, HIV, tuberculosis. And what was also interesting that uh, when they took these bacteria and viruses and they tried to culture it and grow it, they found that they could be regrown. So what it means for you is there is a potential of getting infected uh, even through surgical smoke. So our body does have some mechanism to counter smoke and take care of it. But when you study the respiratory tract, um, the bigger particles, yes, they do get trapped uh, in your nasal cilia and even in your throat and bronchus. But as the particle size decreases, so you saw the particle size was 0.3 to 0.5, and they reach the alveoli and they tend to lodge themselves, which results in chronic diseases. The other cause of concern is uh, we have a sense of security, you know, that, okay, only the people who are around the OT uh, or around the OT table are exposed to smoke. If I'm sitting somewhere far, if I'm an anesthetist or if I am a biomedical engineer and I'm sitting somewhere away, I'm not exposed to smoke. But that's not true. Because of the uh, airflow systems you might have in OT, sometimes laminar, which is even faster, uh, the moment smoke is released, it travels throughout the OR. 
and no matter where you are uh, you are going to be exposed to the same amount of smoke as the surgeon who is on the operating table and even after the procedure is over it takes 20 minutes for the particle count to reduce which means that anyone who's coming to clean the or uh, to take the patient away and they are all still getting exposed uh, to smoke and all ors uh, have a duct system where you have your laminar flow or regular air conditioning where the air is getting changed uh, maybe every 10 to 20 minutes uh, but they don't have filters like they may have a hepa filter but there is exposure happening before the filtration is happening in the duct even for the patients there were studies which uh, found that in laparoscopic surgeries the patients absorbed the surgical smoke some compounds and benzene and toluene were found in the urine samples apart from that as a surgeon for you uh, this is something you have already experienced uh, you have if you're doing a laparoscopic surgery you have to regularly uh, maybe degas open the vent of the troca is take out the smoke and again go back in because of reduced visibility and doing all that can increase the over time and also increase the risk of complications because you're not seeing well and you're having to do multiple instrument exchanges so what do we currently have uh, for surgical smoke so one is your own mechanism that i uh, spoke about just a while ago your own ciliary motility and the mucus which can filter out particles but what happens with long exposure is the ciliary motility is damaged so it's not moving back and forth uh, as effectively it's not capturing those particles as effectively so that's not something for us to rely on uh the other things which became very much in focus uh, in 2020 all your different masks and respirators so the n95 masks so what n95 is 95% of particles are more than 0.3 microns now it's a good uh, it is a good way to filter out smoke but it's difficult to breathe uh, it's not the most reliable if you have facial hair it's not going to stick properly So there's always going to be some smoke that you want to inhale. Uh, PAPR was used a lot by anesthetists and um, endoscopists who are getting exposed to uh, secretions a lot. So it's a full face covering and it has its own breathing mechanism. So although very effective, but you can't be wearing this uh, every day in the OR. The other things are your non-woven mask and cloth mask. They're practically useless because it's a loose fit and you are inhaling smoke uh the other things which came in focus uh were hepa filters so hepa can filter out 99.9% of particulate matter more than 0.3 microns so it is a good filter uh, however the disadvantage of fitting a hepa filter exclusive hepa filter the machine has to be on all the time it's noisy and it has to be within 5 cm of surgical field having a hepa filter in your duct system is not going to help uh, ulpa filters even more fine or even more advanced they can filter out 99.99 almost 100% of particles more than 0.2 microns which is even smaller uh, these filters are used more in semiconductor semiconductor industries the particle size is very fine the exposure of the workers is very high uh, is it feasible to do in an, in a hospital environment maybe not uh, some of you may be using wall suction uh, just suck out the air but that's only suction there is no filtration that air is getting circulated somewhere so when we look at uh, the different energy sources that we use and the solutions or uh, ways in which we may be handling smoke uh, you can clearly see that different energy sources uh, create different sizes of particles and that's inherent to the uh, energy source itself so surgical mask you can see all red it doesn't help you with anything 
uh, N95 will help you against slightly larger particles, but not the smaller ones. Uh, HEPA is slightly more effective and ULPA is one of the most effective filters because of the particle size it can capture. Uh, so what solutions do we have? Uh, so there are dedicated smoke evacuators. You might have heard about them. Uh, they uh, can be attached to your energy source. So if you're using a monopolar pencil and there's an attachment for it along with the tip. So the smoke gets evacuated as soon as it's getting generated. And this can be used for uh, laparoscopic surgery, open surgery, uh, robotic surgery. And they are uh, adaptable to open uh, different energy sources, uh, whether it's monopolar, bipolar, ultrasonic, and even advanced bipolar. And they switch on only when you activate an energy source. They use ULPA filters, uh, which can remove 99.99% of particles 0.1 to 2, 0.1 to 0.2. And we saw that ULP was the most effective uh, filter out there. Uh, there's no noise and uh, you can adjust the flow rate or the suctioning rate depending on uh, your preference. And over the last two years, uh, there have been many best practice recommendations uh, that around PAPRs, which are respirators, should be used uh, for personnel who are using uh, or exposed to endoscopy, bronchoscopy, extubation, etc. Uh, smoke evacuation devices were called out specifically uh, to handle smoke. Uh, clean rooms are favored over HEPA filters. So what that means is there should be treatment or they sh you should be managing smoke where it is creating, where, where it's being created rather than depending on your filters in the duct system uh, of the OR. Uh, apart from SAGES, there are other guidelines uh, uh, NOSH, OSHA, AON all have uh, given a lot of emphasis on managing smoke and what every employer needs to do for the employees. In this case, what the hospitals need to do for all the OR personnel. Uh, even AON in 2017 gave guidelines for surgical smoke safety. Uh, I'm sure we'll be able to share this with you. It's uh, commonly available and uh, it has detailed guidelines about how uh, the team should be managed and uh, what are the precautions we all should be taking. Apart from that, there are other countries which have given uh, guidelines. Uh, now in all of this, uh, unfortunately, you will see that uh, from India, there are no specific guidelines. Even when you look at NABH, which is our main body, uh, they also mention pass, uh, smoke in passing that there should be ventilation in the OR, etc. But there are no dedicated guidelines uh, of uh, smoke management. And that brings me back to the first slide I showed you about that somebody, uh, anybody, nobody. So we need your help. We need your support. Uh, to create awareness, uh, to push for more policies, guidelines around smoke evacuation so that all of us can be safe. Uh, we shouldn't need to wait for complications like SSI to wake up and you know take notice and take actions later. The time is now. Uh, there is good technology available. Uh, there are good systems available for us to execute all of this. Uh, if you wish to know more about uh, smoke evacuation devices, uh, please feel free to reach out to the Ethicon uh, sales representative at the hospital you're working. And we'll be happy to uh, you know, help you with more information. We can also conduct these sessions uh, for the stakeholders in your hospitals, whether it's the nurses, the surgeons, biomedical staff. So please feel free to reach out to us and uh, we'll be happy to help. Thank you so much for your patient listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Vineet. Uh, it is a uh, very uh, kind of uh, heartening to know 
that Ethicon is thinking not only about the patients, but even the safety of uh, the healthcare workers. I'm sure uh, uh, that uh, many of our uh, faculty and delegates uh, would probably interact with your uh, team members uh, to know more about it and, uh, uh, and explore the possibilities of uh, prevention of smoke-related injury uh, to the healthcare workers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for this opportunity. Vinay, yes, we can close today's sessions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Vinay, for uh, such an elaborate talk on smoke and surgical smoke evacuator. So, for uh, thanks, uh, thank you all delegates, uh, all chairpersons and faculty members who uh, have been with us uh, from the morning. And to conclude uh, today's uh, session, uh, I would like to uh, invite all of you uh, at uh, 8 o'clock uh, at the Marriott Hotel. We have a banquet dinner uh, today. And tomorrow morning, we will start the session sharp 9 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.